Techniques Conference Call of Raju Engineers Limited, hosted by Ad Factors PR. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now hand the conference over to Ms. Kushbu Chandrakan Doshi, Managing Director from Raju Engineers Limited. Thank you and over to you Ms. Doshi. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to the conference call for Raju Engineers Limited for the fourth quarter and full year concluded on 31st March 24. It's a pleasure to have you all here. We appreciate your presence here today. Joining us on this call with me, Mr. Sunil Jain, our Executive Director, Mr. Prakash Daga, Chief Financial Officer, and our Investor Relation Team, it's Ed Factors PR. Let me start with the market scenario and some recent developments for that. India has the potential to emerge as a global plastic producer, plastic products producer. Full extrusion machinery market size was estimated at USD 8.33 billion in 22 and is expected to reach 11.6 billion USD by 2030. The demand for plastic extrusion machines is showing as there is a growing need for extruded plastic products from several end use segments such as packaging, consumer goods, construction, and automotive. This preliminary is the growth of the global plastic extrusion machine market. The domestic plastic product market is expected to grow threefold to reach 10 lakhs crore rupees by 27-28. The export of plastic products are expected to grow by grow from 40,000 crore to 1 lakh crore rupees reflecting the global acceptance of Indian products. This is an excellent opportunity for the Indian industry and we must make the most of it as more plastic products imply more plastic processing machineries. Speaking of our company's performance, I'm delighted to present exceptional financial achievements of Raju engineers for the fourth quarter and year ended 2024. Throughout this period, the company has showcased remarkable growth and commitment characterized by notable milestones such as elevated production levels, augmented machinery dispatches, and robust order book. I'm very happy to share that our revenue for the year closed with 197 CR, which is a testament to the hard work and dedication of our team and focused efforts on the strategic chart strategies charted out in FY23. This is just one step the overall growth strategy. This positive momentum underscores the effectiveness of the company's strategic initiatives and highlights its ability to capitalize on the emerging opportunities in the market. Our order book has reached new heights, reflecting the trust and confidence of our customer in our solutions. We are committed to ensure that these orders are fulfilled promptly and with the highest standard of quality further solidifying our reputation in the world market. During the year, we backed a high value order from one of the leading manufacturers of farm machinery and equipment based out of Europe. This prestigious order is for our cutting leaf blown frame line system. This machine is used to manufacture tile bags as per the needs and requirements of customers. This is innovative solution represents our ongoing commitment to provide the solution in agriculture industry with the state-of-the-art equipment that enhances efficiency and product quality. I'm pleased to announce the successful delivery of two prestigious projects in the category of sheet extrusion system, each boasting an impressive output around 800 kilograms per hour. This project represents significant milestone for our company and underscore our commitment to delivering excellence in the field of manufacturing. Our supplies to Cosmo Films and Very Global, two of the India industry giants, speaks volume about our reputation for reliability and innovation. 
This partnership not only demonstrates our capability to meet the demanding requirements of leading players in the market, but also signifies the trust they have placed in our expertise and technology. I am thrilled to share our latest milestone in innovation and technology, the enhancement in technology for our existing five-layer blown film line range. This initiative represents a significant leap forward as we prepare to launch India's first ever high output five layer bronze line. With an impressive output of 800 kilograms per hour and a line speed exceeding 150 meters per minute, this cutting edge technology sets a new standard in the industry, competing with global leaders offering value for money for our customers. Moreover, on April 16, 2024, we celebrated the integration of our new facility, marking the significant expansion in our operational capacity. With an additional 21,000 square feet dedicated to assembly, we are poised to streamline production processes and meet growing demand with efficiency and reduced lead times. Notably, our commitment to excellence extends to the establishment of a dedicated 7,000 square feet space for quality control underscoring our unwavering focus on elevating quality standards across all facets of our operations. This investment underscores our dedication in delivering superior products and services, positioning us for the sustained growth and customer satisfaction in the ever-evolving market landscape. I am pleased to inform you that in line with our commitment to enhancing the shareholder value, the company bought back 26,176 equity shares at a price of 210 rupees, each in pursuance of shareholders' special resolution dated 17 January 2024. The decision to conduct a share buyback can stem from a variety of strategic considerations, such as efficient utilization of capital, giving value to early shareholders wanting to exit, and driven by a positive future outlook. By repurchasing share, a company aimed to enhance value for shareholders by potential increasing earning per share and boosting returns. Additionally, such action signals confidence in the company's financial strength and future prospects, serving as a tangible expression of the management's belief in the company's ability to generate sustainable growth and shareholders' value. Our strategic vision is extensive and comprehensive. We are broadening our international presence, entering into the new markets, investing significantly in research and development to create a more energy efficient product and adopting a digital solution to provide better customer experience. The core of our approach remains our customer and our goal is to continuously exceed their expectations. We have a robust plan to stay ahead of the competition by developing or acquiring technology which is adjacent to our existing portfolio to offer complete solution in the sector, continuously optimizing manufacturing cost and standardization of the existing products that can give us an edge over the competitors, not only from India, but globally as well. Looking forward, our focus is on securing a significant portion of the market in infrastructure, agriculture, electronics, and renewable energy sectors. However, our vision extends beyond mere market dominance. We are dedicated to fostering inclusion and diversity within our workforce, with commitment to allocate 8 to 10% of total employment opportunities for women and 2% for a differently able human beings. Furthermore, under our sustainability program, we are determined to make significant strides towards reducing our carbon footprint. We aim to satisfy 65% of our total electricity needs through renewable energy sources, preliminary through the expansion of our existing solar park. This reflects our unwavering commitment to environment, uh, environmentally responsible practices and emphasize our commitment to driving positive change both within our industry and beyond. We are enthusiastic about the journey that lies ahead. Our objective is clear. We aim to create a long-term value for our old stakeholders. So with this brief note, I would like to hand over to Mr. Prakash Daga, our Chief Financial Officer, to take us through the financial performance of the company. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, let me brief the quarterly financial performance. 
Revenue from operations for the quarter was 56.62.68 crores in quarter 4 FY24, as against rupees 71.43 crores in quarter 4 FY23, a year-on-year -year decrease of 26.26%. This was mainly due to delay in the balance of payment and lifting of machines by the customers, since lead time of the order execution ranges from 4 to 9 months and it can exceed even 9 months in some orders. EBITDA, excluding other income, was at Rs. 8.96 crores in quarter 4 FR24, as against Rs. 6.47 crores in quarter 4 FR23, increase of 38.45% on year on year basis due to higher capacity utilization and improvement in operational efficiencies during the current quarter. EBITDA margin was at Rs. 17.02%, as against 9.06%, YOI increase of 796 basis points. Profit after tax stood at Rs. 7.08 crores in quarter 4 FY24 compared to Rs. 5.39 crores in quarter 4 FY23, YOI increase of 31.35%. Fat margin was at 13.45% as against 7.55%, YOI increase of 590 basis points. Earnings per share stood at Rs. 1.15 in quarter 4 FY24 compared to rupees 0.88 in quarter 4 FR23, YOI increase of 30.68%. Now coming to our full year financial performance, revenue from operations for the year ended was rupees 197.35 crores in FR24, as against rupees 159.79 crores in FR23, a YOI increase of 23.51% on account of intensive efforts by a larger sales team a sales team and entry into new territories, coupled with revived demand for uh, for seat exclusion lines and thermo performance. EBITDA, excluding other income, was at rupees 26.68 crores in FI24, as against rupees 14.02 crores in FI23, increase of 90.35% YOY on account of increase in sales, higher capacity utilization, and improved operational efficiency. EBITDA margin was at 13.52%. As against 8.77 percent, YOI increase of 475 basis points. A conscious standardization of products helps to optimize raw material and other operating costs during the year. Profit after tax was rupees 21.01 crores in FR24 compared to rupees 11.49 crores in FR23. YOI increase of 82.86 percent. Tax margin was rupees about 10.65 percent as against 7.19%, YOI increase of 346 basis points. Earnings per share stood at Rs. 3.41 per share in FR24, compared to Rs. 1.87 in FR23, YOI increase of 82.35%. With this, now I am happy to open the floor for any questions you may have. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Manoj from Rajani Enterprises. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, am I audible? Yes, you are. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. So, con uh, congratulations of on uh, you know, good numbers. So, first question was a bookkeeping question. So, has there been an acqu acquisition of assets during the period? As I can see, uh, like you know, the increase in the plant equipment. Uh, so, just basically that uh, you know, in FY24. Yes, there was a capex of 9.36 crores during the FY24, and it was mainly into land. We had purchased adjacent land. Uh, for the uh, expansion and uh, consider building uh, as well as that. 
okay sir and uh, like secondly wanted to know uh, like you know basic uh, trends that are have uh, that, that you have noticed in the plastic extrusion machinery and uh, for for the next year as well uh, like you know FY25 and FY26 if you could just guide something on that is doshi would you like this question yeah sure so yeah, as i mentioned uh, uh, the kind of growth we are witnessing in the in the sectors like packaging consumer goods construction and automotive that is uh, very encouraging and uh, that is leading the growth in the plastic extrusion machinery worldwide even the recent development uh, in the electronic vehicle is also opening up a revenue uh, revenue stream uh, which may contribute in the future for the extrusion machinery Okay, ma'am. So it it will be for the X F Y twenty six as well. Yeah. Okay, and ma'am, any any kind of uh, numerical uh, guidance if you could uh, that you know just uh, an approximate. Yeah, so if because, we talk about the global market, the current market size is uh, uh, USD eight point three three billion, mm -hmm. uh, which was reported in twenty two, and uh, they expected to grow uh, and reach at USD eleven point six billion by twenty thirty. and uh, if we talk about the domestic market uh, the domestic market product ma is expected to grow threefold to reach uh, to the peak 10 lakhs crore by 2728 so as far as domestic and global market are concerned both the market is growing and uh, we feel that there is a huge opportunity for the products which we manufacture Okay, and sorry, ma'am. Actually, if this, this this might be a repeat question from last phone call. So, what is the market size that we can address? If that could that would really help. Yeah, this is the best part of the entire thing. The market is huge, and we we are doing only at 100 CR. So, there is a great opportunity, and uh, we plan to expand our footprint in the uh, various <laughs> geographic uh, location uh, outside India. So. If we talk about the domestic market, our market size is nearly uh, for the horizontal uh, sheet extrusion and thermoforming machine. We hold the uh, 80 percent of market share, and in the global market, those market shares are peanuts, and there is a huge opportunity to reach out to all of them. If we talk about the vertical uh, extrusion systems, which is blown film line and other products, uh, we hold in the domestic market nearly uh, 60% of the market share, which also again giving us an opportunity to uh, grow. And in the domestic market, uh, in in the export market, again it's a uh, it's a uh, peanut, which is uh, again giving us an opportunity there. Certainly understood, ma'am. Thank you so much. And just one last question on mainly on the working capital cycle. Uh, so I can just notice an extension of the inventory days, uh, like you know, from I guess 130 to 190 days or something like that, if I'm not wrong. And also there has been an increase in the payable days, uh, like kind of just I guess about 10 to 15 days. Uh, so has there been an uh, like you know difficulty from the like in, on the you know just the creditor side for us and also. Like what factors are I mean you know continue contributing to this change? Like I mean this is an industry-wide phenomenon, or just uh, like you know one of for our company? And yeah, that that that's uh, my question. Sir Kishan, yeah, let me explain it. Uh, like, uh, see, the inventory days have increased due to higher inventory level at the year end on account of time gap between the production and lifting of machine. Back to back procurement of uh, high need time of components uh, against high volume models. However, there is a temp it's a temporary increase in the inventory. We hope it will be back to normal within next two quarters. Second reason is the payable. Uh, second question was about payable days, which has increased. Yes, it is due to back to back procurement of high lead time uh, components against high volume orders. Now see, uh, due to this rate free crisis, uh, the imported component what we are uh, importing from Europe and other countries, the lead time has increased. To secure that, uh, to uh, to overcome that lead time, that uh, we have uh, to uh, increase the inventory. Uh, but the company has ensured that the longer holding time of the inventory is accommodated with uh, longer payment obligations is the uh, important assignment uh, with higher reasons inventory. So uh, overall, the net working capital cycle has temporarily increased uh, to 165 days. Yes, sir. Uh, however, however, the entire inventory in our case, the entire we are following uh, order based production. So the entire inventory, what we are holding, we can say it is uh, sold inventory. 
All right. So, so like you said, in the next couple of quarters, so first half, we can see some normalization in the working capital cycle, correct? Yeah, we hope it can normal. It will be normalized because uh, we will, uh, if, uh, let us see uh, how this uh, rate fix crisis and all takes place. And uh, secondly, the dependency on the uh, customers uh, about with lifting of the order. So, these are the two factors. We uh, hope it will normalize uh, in next two, next two quarters and we can be back to normal levels. All right, sir. Yeah, that's it from my side, sir. I will get back in the queue for the, if I have any other further questions. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Participants, you may press star in one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of RK Ladda from Yes Investments. Please go ahead. Congratulations for the good uh, set of numbers and thank you for giving me the opportunity. <clears throat> I just want to get some clarity on the uh, on the is there any replacement uh, demand for our product? Hello. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, is there any replacement demand for our machinery? As I have read in your presentation that there. Now, uh, at present, more than 2 lakh core machines are uh, presently in operation. Then what is the average age uh, for our machine? So generally, the average age used to be uh, 20 years, reduced yeah. to uh, 10 years. Not uh, uh, because the technology upgradation nowadays is so okay. fast okay. that uh, you know it rates to 10 years and after processes may feel like upgrading the technology or enhancing it. Okay, then is there a good replacement demand also? Yes, yes. There is a good replacement demand as well, and there is good uh, demand for the refurbishment as well, which is again a different uh, revenue stream opening up for us. Okay, okay, okay. Th th thank you. This is from my side. Okay, and all the best for future working of your company. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Rahul Khanna from ABS Global Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, ma'am. Uh, congratulations on the good set of numbers. I just, you know, I just had a question that looking at the growth, what kind of revenue and margins are we expecting for the coming fiscal year? And also, if you can guide for the next two years. Yeah, considering the this this year uh, and the kind of order booking we have, we we are uh, targeting to grow by another 17 to 20 percent in terms of revenue by next year, uh, with improved EBITDA uh, margin uh, at around uh, 13 to 15 percent. Okay. Okay. Right, ma'am. And ma'am, um, these margins uh, are, are we looking at these as the sustainable margins? Yes, yes. Right, right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Raj from Raj of Partners. Please go ahead. Hello, I'm Audible. Yes, sir, you are. Yeah. How much is the order book currently? <clears throat> Mr. Jane, would you like to take this? Currently, the order book is about uh, 140 crores, and uh, we expect in the next uh, six to nine months, uh, these orders will be executed. Okay. And how much is the current pi pi pipeline? Are we seeing? Pipeline is, uh, uh, to put a, a figure to it, is very difficult because we are looking at a global level. But uh, I would say we are very bullish uh, because the market and the demand are increasing. As uh, was mentioned earlier, we are getting into new uh, geographies. So we have a good pipeline, I would say, of at least about uh, 800, 900 crores. But it all depends upon the conversion rate from pipeline to order booking. Yeah. So how much is the average conversion rate pipeline to order Just a rough figure. Uh, roughly, we are looking at uh, a current pipeline of 1,000 crores. We are looking at uh, that getting at least uh, 1 is to 5 
would be the conversion depending on from territory to territory. Mm -hmm. Understood. All right. Also, uh, how much is the capex are we planning to incur for FI25 and FI26? I think Kushpu can take that question. Ma'am, may I request to unmute your line, please? Kushpu, ma'am, can you hear us? Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Now you're all. Oh, yeah. yeah. For the next year, we are uh, looking at around uh, 15 CR of capex in the tools, uh, mainly on the uh, uh, CNC machines, uh, imported ones. So that would be there, and uh, for next to next year, uh, more capex would be on the again the space creation. All right. And who are our main peers in our segment? Sorry? I'm asking uh, who are our main peers in our segment? Uh, yeah, there are two. Uh, if we talk about the European competitors, uh, there are three major players uh, uh, from well, two from Germany and one from uh, Italy. Uh, and if you talk about the domestic market, there are also two big players in the domestic market, uh, winter machines and carbon extrusion. And we compete with them on the basis of price, on the basis of core quality? No, we compete with them on the basis of technology. Okay. okay. Purely based on the technology because these two competitors are double in the age of uh, radio engineers. So we compete in terms of technology. So our products are competitive, com com comparatively higher priced to an extent. Uh, I would say the higher technology that leads All to right. a little price increase. All right. Yeah. All right. And if I if I may add to that, uh, when we talk about higher technology, uh, in terms of energy efficiency, uh, we uh, really give a value for money. And that can just and that very well justifies being the revenue expenditure. It very well justifies uh, the premium which they would be giving to us. Understood. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Subban Parikh, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. I'm audible. Hello. Yes, yeah. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. So I'll just couple of questions. So like, uh, my first question would be: Are we facing any challenges, uh, like in case of manpower or logistics over the period of time? <laughs> yeah. Which business doesn't face this? <laughs> of course, we are, <laughs> right. we are facing, and uh, of course, Rajkot, uh, you know, Rajkot, where we are based, is also coming up with that, that great engineering hub. That also creates a scarcity of uh, manpower. And uh, but yeah, we could, we are able to. I mean, if we talk about the current uh, manpower situation at Raju Engineers. Uh, more than 60% of the employees uh, with us since last uh, more than 10, 20, 25 years. So we are always blessed with the people around and uh, we are not really struggling with the wind power, but of course it's a normal r routine business challenges which we face when we are uh, quite well able to handle that the same. And as far as the supply chain is concerned, Mr. Daga talked about the Red Sea crisis and all. So those are the things uh, which is causing an, uh, an hurdle in the export market for us. Uh, for the domestic market, uh, more or less, things are pretty much under control. Okay. So I just wanted to ask about the Red Sea, because which are the major countries like we export to? Uh, yeah, we export. Uh, Mr. Jane, would you like to take this, please? Sure. Uh, we are we go as far as uh, in, in Colombia, in Peru, and then coming back uh, uh, in this part of the world. And there is Africa with Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa. 
then getting into uh, we already have a strong presence in uh, vietnam malaysia thailand see when we talk about the red sea crisis is not only exports it is also uh, availability of vessels and the logistics issue because we do use uh, some equipment which is important so that affects the lead times so when we are talking about these uh, uh, geopolitical crisis it is it does affect from an whole uh, all the operation and uh, we are able to manage it by proper planning okay okay sir uh so i also wanted to ask uh, what are the major industries like in india in indian regions you serve the most sorry major what sorry uh, major industries in india like in which you used to work domestically Yeah, if I may say, the major industries we cater to currently is a flexible packaging and, mm -hmm. and semi-rigid packaging sector. Okay, okay. Uh, I this is just uh, your a new target. I'm just asking. So, are there any targets in your mind for the revenues and margin for the next two three years? Yeah, I I think I already talked about it. We are targeting uh, uh, the twenty percent growth by next year, and uh, the in uh, EBITDA would be in a range of thirteen to fifteen percent. Okay. Uh, and uh, what are what is the current trend in plastic exclusion market? If you may say uh, a bit. Mr. Jain, would you like to take this? So, are we talking about domestic or uh, global? Uh, both, both, both. Okay. If we talk about uh, global in the sector which we are operating, uh, it should be in the region of about forty thousand or fifty thousand crores. And uh, as Koipu rightly mentioned, uh, the overall plastic processing machinery uh, we are negligible. Our presence is negligible as a country. So uh, that is uh, surely going up now. People have started looking at India. If we look at the uh, domestic uh, situation, uh, the industries which we cater to, because there is another industry, the Rafi industry, which is uh, which should be about 2,000 crores, but we are not in that industry. But otherwise, the industry would be in the clear region of uh, 1,500 crores, um, putting all the exclusion and homoforming uh, products together. Okay, so are we taking any steps as per the industry trend? See, industry trend is uh, uh, our our strategy is that since we are in exclusion, exclusion itself caters to a lot of other industries. So, if we talk about the industry trend, when we talk about flexible packaging, uh, we already mentioned about uh, new technologies which we have come up with. But extrusion itself also caters to sheet extrusion, and uh, there is a growing trend in the renewable energy segment, more specifically in the solar energy segment, and that's an area which we are looking at. So plastics is plastics; it can be used in packaging, it can be used in infrastructure, it's used in agriculture, and all these are growing markets. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as you mentioned about solar, I have one question over there. Is like, what is the market share of solar, and how, like, how much opportunity we have in that solar space going forward? Oh, the opportunity! Uh, so much of government support, and recently you may be aware. Uh, yeah. Prime Minister Surya Ghar Bijli Yojana. Right, right. Yeah. Which would mean solar panels being installed on households, and then there is a PI okay. scheme for solar modules and even wafers. So uh, the industry is going to definitely grow, and uh, we cater to one of the uh, components which goes into manufacturing of solar modules. Okay. So that's the industry okay. which uh, uh, will. Uh, it's an additional sector which we are adding to our portfolio, using mm -hmm. the same our forte being extrusion. Okay. So will be so we will be doing any capex for this particular uh, thing like for solar in future. 
yes we already supplied a machine and uh, we have good uh, pipeline of inquiries now because uh, you know the government came up with anti dumping duty uh, on both the uh, solar modules and solar cells which is encouraging a lot of domestic production otherwise people would have just imported stuff from china so with local manufacturing coming up uh, we are confident that uh, the requirement for machines will go up and we are ready with the solutions uh, already tried and tested so uh, all get up okay uh, also i uh, just add a question uh, can you throw some light on the machinery which we manufacture for solar space sure uh, uh, can i request kushpu to take that yeah, yeah. so um, when you have a solar panel uh, there is a solar cells inside and those cells has to be encapsulated by the uh, sheet which is a uh, eva ethyl vinyl acetate and this eva sheet getting extruded from the machines which we manufacture so this is the product which we offer to the solar sector okay so are we like uh, giving out this uh, sheets to any you know to the clients who may we send this machine yeah we have supplied the machine in domestic market uh, okay uh, existing player called nevita alpha uh, they are into manufacturing of uh, sheet and also solar panels okay okay and my last question which i would like to ask is about a pv sheet like which we manufacture what is the status on that sorry pv sheet a bit of pv yeah pv sheet is the next version after of technology after eva sheet and uh, mm -hmm. our machines are quite capable to process that material because basically the machines remain same and the material which you process the polymers that get changed so our machines are uh, capable of processing the poe as well okay okay thank you so much ma'am and sir uh, i'll join the queue thank you thank you very much next question is from the line of sri ram r and visual investor please go ahead thank you for the opportunity i have two questions uh, how much is your audio is not clear can you please speak through the handset yeah is it audible now yes thank you yeah uh, i have two questions so one is you know how much was your exports for q4 and also for the full year fy24 second question is uh, you know what is broadly the application split like uh, earlier you have given this figure flexible packaging semi rigid uh, green solar etc yes sure so that's why would you take yeah let me take this question the export for this year fy24 was uh, 45% of total revenue and uh, uh, territory wise uh, or uh, industry wise if you uh, talk about then we have we are supplying in uh, different segment which i will just speak yeah flexible packaging uh, supply to flexible uh, flexible packaging industry during the fy24 was around 63% of total sales then uh, there was agricultural sector and uh, semi rigid packaging as well semi rigid was 25 percent and others in uh, agriculture and infrastructure sector okay thank you so much all the best thank you next question is from line of diana rora from jd financials please go ahead yeah hi am i audible hello Yes, you are able. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, so, my first question would be: In our export market, like uh, which regions account for most orders? Mr. Jain, would you like to take this, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Latin America would be would be about ten uh, percent. Vietnam would be about thirty uh, percent. Uh, um, Africa and South Africa would be the rest. 
Okay, okay. And sir, uh, which regions or countries you know have shown significant growth potential for the company's product? Latin America is offering a very. See, uh, uh, let me uh, reiterate what I had said earlier. If you look at the global market, presence of Indian companies is hardly there. So wherever you touch, there is growth. But if we talk about specific markets uh, uh, in our industry, specifically talking about flexible packaging, there's a huge uh, growth in the Latin American market with the uh, consumer uh, segment uh, demanding more and more packed foods. Uh, Africa, as usual, because they have specific products which uh, definitely need flexible packaging. So both these markets are uh, giving us good traction. And uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, again, good growth and flexible packaging. Okay. Uh, and sir, as you said that uh, the presence of Indian companies is low in this area. So are there any, you know, further geographic expansion that we are targeting? We are uh, looking at uh, the CIS countries uh, right now, and uh, that's a good uh, growth opportunity for us. Okay. Uh, so, and you know, we have seen that the demand in the packaging industry has increased over a period of time. So, how do we anticipate this uh, demand to be in the near future? I don't think people have a choice but to buy packed foods. So, uh, we, we do see that flexible packaging or packaging as such growing by at least uh, six, seven percent total packaging. And out of that, plastic packaging would uh, uh, definitely be growing at 12 to 15 percent. Okay, sir. And, sir, uh, you know, uh, what is what will be the domestic and global share in uh, terms of Q4 and FR24? Prakash, can you take that? Yeah, yeah let me take this question. So the, uh, for F, uh, quarter four FI24, the domestic share was uh, around 70% and 30% for the exports. Uh, uh, against which, uh, for the, on an annualized basis for the full year, uh, the domestic was 55% and uh, exports was 45%. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, sir, have there any have there been any strategic partnerships or collaborations established in uh, this financial year to drive the growth? Well, there is many in the pipeline. We have not concluded so far, but yeah, we are uh, aggressively working on this initiative. Probably, we may have some good news at the end of the year. And ma'am, has, and, and has the you know, industry is rapidly growing, so are there any challenges that uh, we have been facing, especially in terms of manpower, government policies, shipping lines, logistics, and such? Any such thing? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the manpower uh, and uh, supply chain issues as every business faces, that those are the normal routine challenges which we are facing at this point of time. Uh, we do not fall under any kind of a PLI scheme or any other schemes from the government side as of now. But uh, probably after the election, there, there could be some good news uh, as far as the PN is announcing to have the 10 kg of Atabek for each and every person of uh, India. So all those kind of activities may boost up the say, uh, our uh, revenue streams. Okay. Uh, and um, what would be our current capacity utilization? We are currently utilizing uh, 80%, which is, uh, I would say, that's full now. And that's why we have uh, invested in the new land and building which is adjacent to our existing premises. So with that uh, new thing, uh, we would be able to uh, add another 25 to 30% of our capacity. Okay. And uh, uh, can you throw some light on any new product segment that we are trying to uh, move into beyond plastic packaging? Um, beyond packaging, we are targeting uh, agriculture, renewable, and electronics. So these are the segments which we are targeting, and uh, we are moving slowly in that segment with our solutions. Okay, and uh, uh, have there been any new notable changes in customer demand patterns in regional or regional market dynamics? 
Uh, Mr. Jain, would you take this, please? Sure. Uh, again, going back to what I said earlier, uh, people are preferring more and more uh, packed foods than uh, e-commerce is a big uh, growth driver because that demands uh, flexible packaging. And uh, that kind of attraction one sees both uh, within the country and uh, overseas. So consumer trend is definitely going in for more uh, packaged foods, which necessitates uh, flexible packaging. And uh, as we were talking about earlier, renewable energy, solar is another uh, growth driver, uh, which is not nearly consumer demand, but it is uh, demand from the industry which is going to benefit us. Okay. And my last question would be, uh, how, have we, how have we managed uh, fluctuations in raw material prices and supply chain challenges? Shall I take this question, man? Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, this works. See, uh, if you talk about uh, FI24, the prices uh, of, of raw materials more or less remain stable, and there are no major fluctuations. And uh, only thing which uh, was a challenge for us is, uh, is uh, an increase in late time due to rate free crisis, and there are some disruptions in supply chain. So to mitigate that, uh, we have already uh, increased our inventory because it is back to back booked against the orders. So otherwise, uh, price fluctuations uh, during the current year, at least, we have not faced any challenges. Okay, thank, thank you. That would be all from my side. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Naman Parmar from Nivesha Investment Advisory. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to know what is your average price realization of the flexible packaging machinery? Hello. Yeah. Average price realization would be around uh, for the flexible packaging. There are also various segment uh, and the size right. of the technology differs, but you one can say that it, it ranges from 10 to 15 percent. Okay, and for semi rigid, uh, semi rigid, uh, one can say uh, 15 to 20 percent. You are saying for what? 15 to 20 percent of what? That's the margin I'm talking about. The no, I, I, uh, I no, no, I am talking price, uh, price realization. Price realization. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, because of the uh, customization, let us say in flexible packaging, uh, the ticket size mm -hmm. would range from. Uh, uh, even 1 crores and going up to 10 crores. It depends on the output okay. levels and the width. Right. And uh, semi-digit packaging, semi packaging again can go up from 1 crore to, uh, to 6, 7 crores. Okay. And uh, currently you are saying you are going into the solar module part. So how much of revenue you are expecting from the renewable side in let's say from the next two years down the line. We are expecting another 20 to 25 CR in the, in the next two years from this segment. Okay, and uh, currently you are telling about the capex of 9 to 10 crore. This is for the only lens or it is for the tools also? No, currently it is for the land and building. The tools, uh, as I mentioned in the previous discussion, it will be for this year. So the total capex would be of uh, 15 crore for FY25? Around. Yeah, 10 to 15 crore. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Arora, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. 
Thank you for the opportunity. Actually, a lot of questions got answered. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned, that we are targeting the beta margins of 13%, right, for the next two years. So that would be like for exclusively for domestic or global or like inclusive both. Just a small country, you know that. No, no, that's including uh, both the markets, domestic and global. Okay, okay. And then our uh, total income comprises of roughly, I mean, uh, uh, somewhere around four crores for the financial year. So if you can throw some light, like what does it comprise of? So let me take. Yeah. See, the total income is mainly uh, comprising of uh, interest on uh, fixed deposit of around two point five crores, and uh, there are some uh, export incentives as well uh, of around seventy lakhs or so. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. And one last uh, question. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, I, uh, I think I missed the number of the current order book value. So uh, did you mention the order book? It's value around hundred and forty CR. Okay. Okay. And what would be the tenure for the same man? Uh, it varies from four months to. Nine months. Okay. And whatever the pending orders are, there we aim to, uh, you know, seventy-five percent of the orders we are targeting to uh, execute in first two quarters. Okay. Thank you so much for the clarity, ma'am, and uh, all the best for future. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no, no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Ms. Kushbu Chandragan Doshi, Managing Director from Raji Engineers Limited, for closing comments. Thank you. So I would like to thank you all of uh, you taking the time out at the, attending this call. I'm also thankful to each member of our Raji Engineers family, as well as our clients, creditors, banks, financial institutions, and all our stakeholders. For any further queries or information, please get in touch with our investor relations team and sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Raju Engineers Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And now this connection. Thank you. Thank you.